Welcome, everybody, and thanks for inviting me to this uh, great event. Uh, happy to be uh, present in this event and for the an audience that for me is new. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Stefano De Migliani. I'm a Microsoft MVP on Business Central and Azure. Uh, today, I want to spend uh, some minutes on this uh, conference in order to uh, talk a bit about uh, generative AI in Business Central. I think that you know that AI is one of the hottest topics in the, in the last uh, months year or years, especially months. We have uh, see a lot of post uh, announcements and so on related to AI features. Uh, AI features are one of the biggest revolution in the last uh, uh, five years, I think. And there are a lot of records that you can see online from lots of uh, business companies that say that uh, AI in the last uh, at least five years has increased and changed the way to work in a lot of sectors. And AI is probably uh, could increase globally the productivity in the last 10 years or so uh, for more than 30%. And uh, AI gives you a, a productivity boost and AI is everywhere. So that's why also in Business Central, we need to start thinking on AI features. I think that a, a Microsoft, uh, you know that Microsoft has placed AI on quite every product in their uh, product lines. Uh, Microsoft has AI or copilots, has copil introduced copilots in uh, uh, a lot of products. You can see from these slides that I used to summarize the, uh, that, that you can, uh, uh, AI uh, and copilots are on every Power Platform products and on every Dynamics 65 products, uh, AI is on Azure directly now, and Dynamics, also Business Center, is starting on embracing this train, and also Business Center has AI for mainly for uh, generative AI features. Uh, when we talk about AI, especially for Business Central, we need to start introducing what is Azure Open AI. And Azure OpenAI, in small words, is a partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI. Uh, Microsoft is the gold sponsor, was the gold sponsor of OpenAI in order to create powerful models. Uh, Microsoft acquires OpenAI, and now it's, it, it, it has a strict partnership where Microsoft gives the infrastructure and OpenAI gives the model. Uh, Azure OpenAI is OpenAI on Azure. And uh, this service provides a safe and reliable way to access the all the AI models, the standard AI models like ChatGPT uh, and all the other open AI models, uh, directly in the Azure ecosystem. So with all the uh, enterprise features like security, data security, uh, privacy, and so on, that Azure has. And when we talk about uh, uh, AI, on Azure, we need to start introducing two important terminology. One is what is generative AI. Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence uh, where an AI system is able to generate text, images, or other media types in response to questions, to what we ask him. Uh, and these questions are called prompts. So we give a prompt to an AI engine and this engine gives us uh, text or images or media in response to that text. And this is what is called generative AI. And in Business Central, we will start see in the next months or years, generative AI features inside the products. And when we talk about uh, AI in the Microsoft ecosystem, we need to also to uh, remember that Microsoft uh, in every AI feature introduces the term of responsible AI. Responsible AI is an approach for developing AI system in a safe, trustworthy, and ethical way. Uh, Microsoft has also developed a standard for that, a responsible AI standard. And this is a framework, just like a framework for building AI system. And this AI system that need to adhere to the responsible AI standard needs to have, uh, adhere to six main principles, fairness, reliability, so security and safety, uh, privacy and security, inclusiveness, AI must be inclusive, 
transparency and accountability. These are the main six pillars that uh, defines what is called responsible AI. Uh, why Azure OpenAI in Site Business Center and non directly OpenAI? Uh, mainly for enterprise reasons. Azure OpenAI is more enterprise than the standard OpenAI. In Azure OpenAI, you have the models that you have in OpenAI, like GPT, the family GPT family, DALI for images, codex, embeddings, DaVinci, and so on. Uh, but on Azure OpenAI models, uh, models can be trained and customized exactly like in OpenAI. But in Azure OpenAI, you have inter more enterprise features. For example, you have managed identity. You can authenticate in order to use uh, use managed identity to, authentic to authenticate to Azure OpenAI. You have virtual network and virtual private needs support. This means that you can close the, your OpenAI engines and models to your virtual network, no internet access or no, your data cannot, uh, will not leave your corporate network. You have content filtering, you have monitoring, you have monitoring included in every uh, in Azure monitor, so you can directly monitor your uh, OpenAI instances and see who use them and how they use them. Azure OpenAI is, is also compliant with standards, security uh, entities like SOC, ISO, and so on. And Azure OpenAI, another extremely important feature, in my opinion, is that can be deployed on many different regions. Uh, now it support on East US, South Central US, and Western Europe. More regions will be added in, in the near future. But this is extremely important if you want to provide AI features to your customers, because with Azure OpenAI, you can guarantee safety of the data and then also performances, because you can deploy an OpenAI instance near the customer in the same region as the customer tenant. Uh, when we talk about AI integration with Business Central, uh, what we have now? At the moment, we are on the very, very first steps of the Azure uh, OpenAI integration inside Business Central. At the moment, you have available a code unit called Azure OpenAI implementation that in Business Central 22 is internal. So uh, you cannot directly use that code unit. Uh, I, later, I will show that. But uh, uh, the idea is that in the future, next release or something like that, uh, this code unit will be open. And this means that you will be able to use the standard module inside the system application uh, for calling Azure OpenAI services. At the moment, this is internal. So this is only available uh, for internal usage. You cannot uh, use the, that code unit. And the uh, recommendation is that if you want to start using Azure OpenAI, you can copy feature of this code unit, create your own OpenAI implementation and start using. And in this case, you will be available, will be ready when Microsoft will open this code unit to just change the name and reuse the methods. Uh, when we have, with this code unit, what, what does this code unit simply uh, permits to do? This code unit is quite simple. It permits you to create a prompt, feature for creating what is called a prompt, so a query for the OpenAI engine, and then sending requests to the OpenAI engine and uh, retrieve response for, to, 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 from the engine. And when you use integrations with uh, Azure OpenAI, you have to remember that AI is often unpredictable and quite expensive, if not, if not what you what used. So AI, uh, at least it takes days. I've uh, done a session about that, and uh, I use an a, a similarity. So AI respect this pattern. If you give shit in, it gives shit out. So the quality of the input data reflects the quality of the output response that you have. So you need to provide good data and good prompt in order to have a great response. Uh, one of the main limitations of the standard implementation in Business Center is related to prompts. Uh, you need to remember that when you interact with an AI model, like GPT or something like that, uh, you need to provide a prompt. A prompt is simply a request to the OpenAI engine, and a prompt is weighted in tokens. Uh, and each model 
has a maximum or length, token length, supports a, a maximum token length. For example, GPT 3.5 support a maximum of 4K K tokens. Uh, GPT 4 or, uh, or that family supports tokens until uh, 32Ks. So uh, this means that when you provide the prompt, the prompt is what it is tokenized. Tokenized means that uh, your string, your prompt, is divided into not, not exactly words, but something like that. And these are weighted. And uh, uh, this, the request that is sent to the OpenAI engine is weighted in tokens. And you need to respect the that token limits. Otherwise, the prompt and the, the model gives you a wrong response, saying that you have, over, you have overcome the token limits. And you can, you can we, we, we know that a really good response. Uh, the right key to start using uh, OpenAI is learning prompts. Prompts is the first big step, and the uh, main step, that, the, the main uh, step that you need to do in order to have uh, interact with AI features. Uh, some tricks for using prompts uh, that I suggest, personally suggest, is saying your prompt to that the AI engine needs to work as a particular role. So for example, if you, if you need to pass financial data to your prompt, because you are asking features related to this financial data, if you instruct your AI model to, with the question side, act as a financial manager and give me this response according to that data, uh, it will act like a financials and not like a general uh, people that work, work with that data. And this change your response. You can also instruct your prompt to create a task. So say your prompt that giving this data create something for me. And the prompt it will be able to do uh, an output that is different than a string, but it can also create uh, something. And you can also instruct the output to be as in a particular format. PDF, XML, or JSON. And uh, this is uh, particularly important, in my opinion, if you want to automate tasks. With AI, you can automate tasks. If you go to show the, our, the session that I've done with Dimitri Cazzo in, at uh, Russian BC Tech Days, we have shown how you can create a prompt answering JSON in order to automate the scheduling of job queue tasks. And if you have a prompt that writes your response always in JSON, and you can say that you only speak JSON to your prompt, uh, you will always have a response in JSON with the structure that you give to that prompt. And this is useful for automation. Uh, if you want to make your app AI power and business central, the steps that you need to do are simply register to Azure OpenAI and cre create a a a an instance of that of the Azure OpenAI service. Then you need to learn prompts. Prompts is important in order to be able to instruct your model to ask the questions. Uh, you can experiment. You have a feature on Azure OpenAI called Playground where you can experiment your, if your prompt is good or not. In a, you can give it some data, create a prompt, and give and check if the response is okay or not. And then you can, when, when you have all that, you can start working, and maybe you can, the, our idea and that we show, for example, Tech Days is moving from something like that, so an interface that the standard interface to business center to something like that, where we ask the system to give result, and we don't do nothing in the system. Uh, I want to show a demo here uh, of what we have today in uh, in Azure in um, in the standard uh, system, and to show this demo, uh, first I want let me just open this. Uh, I want to start first how you can create Azure OpenAI instance. You simply go on the Azure portal, and we have you have the Azure OpenAI menu here. And the first thing that you need to do is to create an instance of the Azure OpenAI. As you can see here, we have two instances. One is in East US, and one is in Western Europe. And this is the main difference compared to Azure OpenAI, so compared, sorry, to OpenAI standard. Because in Azure OpenAI, you can create more than one instance, and each instance has its own location. So, for example, my all my European customer can use this instance, while my US customer can use this instance. Not possible that this in OpenAI standard. 
uh, when you can when you have a particular instance of Azure OpenAI, it gives you an endpoint. And this is the endpoint you need to call according to, to the keys that you can read here. You need to, to have the endpoint and the keys. Uh, when the, the instance is deployed, you need to go on model deployments. And on model deployments, you need to deploy your models. Open Azure OpenAI supports different models, and you can deploy an instance of the model you want. For example, for interactive, in for this demo, I deployed a model uh, that uses DaVinci. DaVinci is a model that permits you to interact with AI features by go sending prompts and receiving a response. Uh, you can also deploy other more powerful models like G GPT 3.5, for example. Uh, just the time to open uh, Azure OpenAI Studio is where you can deploy models. And on the deployment tab, you can just click create new deployment and you can select the model that you want to deploy. In here, you can select the list of models that your system has. And for example, for this case, I deploy DaVinci, I deploy Turbo, GPT-345 Turbo, and other models. You can have more than one models according to the usage. For this demo, I will use that. Uh, when the model is deployed, you can start working. And uh, uh, to show this in, uh, uh, to quickly show that, I've uh, uh, the first thing that I want to show is that I open my Visual Studio Code, and the first thing that I want to show you is that in the standard uh, business center now you have a code unit called Azure OpenAI implementation. This code unit you can see from here that is internal, so you cannot use directly for the moment. This will change, but for the moment it's just as an experimental feature is uh, internal. And, but in this code unit, you have all the features that you need from interacting with OpenAI. So you have the feature for creating completions. Completions are uh, questions that you can send to, the, to your models. You, you have the features for interacting, sending a completion, for reading a response, for sending a, a request to the OpenAI service, and so on. So just copy this, and you can create your own unit. Uh, what I've done here uh, is uh, exactly that. So before showing the demo, I want to, to show that in actions. So my, in my demo here, I have some items in my uh, environment. And as you can see, for example, if I open this item, the item card, there's the item category code. The item category code is uh, where you can categorize your item and you can specify different categories like here. Sorry for the Italian language, but this is a desk that we have. Uh, I, I've, I've, uh, this is the category that uh, is uh, linked to that, uh, to that, that, that item. But you can see that I have also, in my categories, I have also this category. And this category is much more suitable for that than this. Here I created a feature called Suggest Item Category, where the system reads my, my, all my categories, sends a request to Azure OpenAI, saying that given this set of categories, this item, what categories should belong to? And Azure OpenAI suggests the category based on the description of my item. So if I click on this, the request is sent to Azure OpenAI. And Azure OpenAI is saying me that the suggested category is this, one of my available category. And it, 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 I can select yes, and the, the category is updated or not. So if I select that, yes, the category of the item is updated and so on. Uh, if I select, for example, an item where I don't have a particular category like this, this is a pasta with tomato sauce item. So I don't have a category, specific category for this in my, in my 
I don't have a, something like food or something like that in my categories uh, inside Business Central. If I ask that to Azure OpenAI, it suggests me, for example, that the best category is consumable, consumable items, because it's the best category that for, for him, for the model, treats this item according to the category that I have. And I can su suggest or not. So how Azure OpenAI knows that? Uh, here is, there's a code. Let me close this. So in the, I, I have an action here in the, uh, in the item card that simply does some things. The first thing is uh, reads the uh, category that I have. So it uh, uh, creates a category list, category, the build category list functions is a function that you can see here that simply loops on all my categories and creates a list of categories, a string containing all the categories. Then with this category, I have a prompt string and in my prompt string is the question that I sent to OpenAI. So how is this tension of creating? In a particular format that OpenAI can work in, for example, given a list of item categories, pick one that will suit an item with the name that provided. And here I provide the item categories, my list, and it, it show me the selected. So I can create a prompt saying to the model that given a list of categories and I will provide that list. You should give the best one that suits my uh, business case, my, my item environment. The generate completion is a call on this code unit that I call Azure OpenAI code unit. That is the copy of the Microsoft standard code unit with some small modifications, but it's just like the standard. Uh, where I, I, I have a prompt and in this code unit, there's all this, what we need to call the model. So this code unit needs some parameters, the prompt, the token, the temperature, the temperature, uh, the, the prompt is the question. The token is the maximum number of tokens where you want to split the question. And the temperature is a value that says how much the model needs to create a random uh, results or not. Zero means no random results. And if you go uh, above the zero, it means that the, the prompt, the, the model, the, the engine of the model will take more risk in order to give you the response. And uh, it's sending the request. So the send request is the, 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 the the procedure that sends a request that reads it's a post request to the Azure OpenAI implementation, sending the API key. And it, it gives, reads the response. The response is a JSON that if I go back, sorry, if I just go back in my uh, item card, I read the response. The response is a text, is the most suggested category. and I read this text and I process that test, extracted as a test category and placing that into the item card. So I'm sending a prompt, reading the response and parsing the response to give you that. This is what is available in the standard code unit, Azure OpenAI code unit in Business Central today. You can use that a lot because uh, you can automate actions mainly. It's mainly for generative AI features. And simply by modifying uh, the prompts and nothing more than that, you can send questions according to your data and receiving responses and use that response to do actions inside Business Central. Obviously, you can do a lot of things with this, like in this case. Uh, this is just one of the examples, but you can do much more than this. Uh, but if you try to do a lot more, for example, Starting with the business central data, uh, you will found some problems. And uh, uh, the main problems are related to limitations. So this is suitable when you have small prompts. Like in this case, I have a small set of categories 
and I give them all that giving this set of categories. Can you suggest me the best category for my item? This works perfectly. But if you have 1,000 of categories, you will reach the prompt limit, and this is a problem. And this is not, this code unit is not suitable for checking with your own data. And a lot of partners ask, how can I check with my own data from Business Central? And this is what we show at the days, and I suggest to check our recorded video of the session that we, ha we have done at the days, because we uh, talk about that. We will talk about that also at next direction semia, more in depth. But uh, quickly speaking now, because I not a lot of time today, uh, to chat with data, this code unit is not enough. Uh, to chat with data, you need to let, work with large data sets. So imagine that I want from my business center to chat with my sales data. So I, I, what I would like to do is giving to the models the knowledge of all the entire my business center sales data. And the models need to know that and answer my question. To do that is absolutely possible, but you need essentially, I think, two or three things, external things. The first thing is you need to do a vector database because to have large data, large data must be stored into a, what is called a vector database. And the format where the data must be stored is in the form of the embeddings. Embeddings are a particular representation of data in numerical format, where a string is written into numerical data and this embedding is stored in the vector database. Uh, vector database can be element, uh, continuously improved uh, with lots of data and lots of knowledge. And then you need to interact with that vector database. And in my opinion, the best way is not doing that directly from IL code, but in my opinion, the best way to interact with the vector database is to use Azure Functions. So what I prefer to do in these scenarios and what we also we show at 10 days is an Azure function calling a vector database embedding business center knowledge and from business center, we call that Azure function wizarding with three lines of code. This is the best way to do in order to work with large vector databases and large data. And you will see, uh, we will talk about that later in uh, other events. Where we, it will take us a lot of time explaining that, and it's not you know, extremely easy. But remember, just to remember that now, I want, I, my goal for today is introducing Azure OpenAI features introducing the possibility to embed generative AI feature into Business Central, what we, have, we are now, how you can do now, expect more features in Business Central 23, from starting from October, but just for now, simply clone the Microsoft Code unit and do your own. That's all for me for today. Uh, thank you for attending that uh, small session and uh, See you in the next events. If you have questions, feel free to reach me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, or something like that. Thanks a lot for attending and see you soon. Bye-bye.